So about a month ago, I decided that I was going to give a serious try to Emacs. And I've made a couple of videos about it since then. And I have some final thoughts because for the most part, I'm now done with Emacs. And it's not really because Emacs is horrible. So I'm just going to get that out of the way. Spoiler alert. I don't think Emacs is bad. It's just not for me. So this is going to be a little bit of a rambly video. I have some notes and anybody who's watched the channel for any amount of time knows that me taking notes is pretty odd but I have some notes and I'm, I'm just gonna kind of ramble my way through this because everybody knows that when I do take notes I don't follow them so it's gonna be a mess but anyways so let's just start off with this the biggest thing I have against Emacs at least for my personal use is that I don't have a need for it because I'm not a developer I'm not a programmer I don't have a specific need that Emacs can fill that Vim doesn't already fill for me. So most of the code work that I do is either for writing or managing my window managers, which is a big part of it, but also a few hobby things where I'm going through and learning different languages. So right now I'm dabbling in Python and I don't really need like a full-fledged IDE or anything like that. So I just needed just a basic text editor. That's the need that I really need filled from a program like Emacs or Vim. And that was my overall overwhelming experience with Emacs is that I just ended up using it like Vim. And there's not a huge problem with that. Like if you are just going to use Emacs that way, it fills that purpose perfectly fine. Like with Doom Emacs, which is what I ended up downloading, you can use Emacs or Doom Emacs just like them. I mean, the key bindings are most of the same. Now, there's a whole bunch of extra key bindings and key chords and stuff like that. They go through and do a ton of other stuff, and I'll get to that in a minute. But if you just wanted to use it like them, it'd be fine. But honestly, the biggest problem I had with this entire experiment was that you're not supposed to use Emacs in the terminal. And that's the way I started out doing it. It was like I started out using the Emacs terminal version because that's where I do all of my coding or whatever. It's where I always use Vim. It's where it's just my habit of, you know, I'm usually in the terminal anyways, moving files around, doing whatever. And then when I need to edit one of them, I just stay in the terminal using Vim or NeoVim in my case. So when I started using Emacs, that's where I decided that I wanted to use it because that was comfortable for me. But that's not the way you're supposed to use Emacs. You're supposed to use the GUI client. And that was a completely different... I mean, it was like trying to change muscle memory because I'm so used to just being in the terminal all the time doing stuff to have to then go out of the terminal and go into Emacs because I wasn't in Emacs all the time anyways. Like, And then find the file that I was work, you know, looking at in the terminal and then do the editing there. It was It's added this entire extra step and it was just not a great experience. Now, I understand that people who get invested in the Emacs ecosystem can do all of their terminal stuff and all of their moving of files around inside of Emacs, but that's not the experience that I want. If I'm going to do stuff in the command line, I'm going to use a terminal. I'm going to use Alacrity. It's my terminal of choice. Emacs is never going to replace that for me. It's just not because it's not a good experience. I don't want to have my terminal experience to be baked in with everything else that Emacs does. It's just not what I want from a program. And that was my biggest stumbling block is trying to figure out how to kind of meld these two workflows where I spend all my time in the terminal, but also have to then leave the terminal to use Emacs to edit the files and stuff that I needed to edit. And that was not, it wasn't a great experience for me. Another thing that I found was that there's just too much stuff going on in Emacs. Now, if you ask Emacs aficionados, people who really enjoy using Emacs or Doom Emacs, any of the flavors, they'll tell you that Emacs isn't bloated. It's just a Lisp interpreter that has a whole bunch of stuff built on top of it. That's fair enough. Technically, that's 100% true. It's just like Linux is not technically an operating system. It's just a kernel, and it has a whole bunch of stuff that's built on top of it. That's the way a lot of open source stuff is. And technically, that's true. But I always 
go into Emacs feeling overwhelmed because there's it's not it, while it may technically be true that it's just a Lisp interpreter, really. When you go into Emacs, you get the feeling that it has so much stuff. Like, I mean, it has org mode. It has you know just the regular text editing mode. It has a, a ton of programming stuff. It has org mode. It has all these plugins, and that's not stuff that you build on top of it. That's all stuff that's included. So, like, it has games installed by default. Like, so technically, yes, Emacs is a Lisp in, or an eLisp interpreter, or whatever it is. But it also has all this cruft on top of it and your experience isn't just that it's a, a an interpreter for a language but that it's an entire ecosystem of stuff i'm not one of those guys who is against bloat you know like i'm not I, it, if there's a program out there that i want to use and it's considered bloated by the the meme guys i don't care as long as it does the thing that i want it to do i can just ignore the stuff that's on top of it right but with emacs I always felt like I wasn't using it to its full potential. And it's true that I wasn't. I was just using it as a text editor or a, a code editor. And there's so much more that Emacs can do. And it almost makes me feel guilty for not using that stuff, right? It, and it's, it's like you want to use a program for its full potential. like Because everybody proclaims the glories that is org mode, right? And... I wanted to get into org mode, so I spent some time in org mode, and it's good, and it's cool, but it's not for me, because it doesn't fit in with my established workflow. All of my workflow right now is, especially with when it comes to notes and stuff, is built into VimWiki. Now, you can do everything you want from VimWiki inside org mode and org roam and all this stuff. It's perfectly capable of doing so, but I already have my established workflow in VimWiki, and I'd have to transfer it all over, which is fine, but I always felt like I was going to get distracted by other things in Emacs. When I when I want to take a note, I just want to open up VimWiki and go. I don't want to have to navigate through all this other stuff, and I can, like you don't actually have to see the games and stuff like that, but it was in the back of my mind, and there was uh, just an extraneous number of key bindings that you have to learn. And it's, it was, it's a mess, right? It's not a great experience. Now, the key bindings thing is, is a whole different beast because as far as I can tell, there are very few places where you can go and just see a list of key bindings. Now, if you go, Doom Emacs has fantastic documentation. It's like really good documentation. You go to the GitHub and they have pages after pages of, of stuff for you to read. It's like a freaking novel. The problem is, I'm a lazy dude, right? Like, I don't want to have to go through and read a novel for my text editor. I really don't. I mean, Vim is the same way, right? Vim has a huge uh, a swath of documentation that you can go through and read. And so it has the same problem as Emacs. But what I desperately want is a list of key bindings in Emacs. Because at least with Vim, you can go through and search for key bindings on the internet for Vim. And they'll tell you what you want to do and you can go through vim tutor and stuff like that and learn the basics and stuff again like and there's an emacs tutor that you can go through and do that stuff but the problem with emacs is that there's so many different variants and they all have different key bindings right and the thing with doom emacs is that it has vim stuff in it like you can navigate your documents and stuff with vim but it also has all the emacs key bindings and stuff as well so it's kind of like an amalgamation of of key bindings and it gets really confusing over which guide you should use. And, you know, sure, you go to the Emacs or Doom Emacs documentation and it has all the stuff there. But if you want to find an easy tutorial, like that has just like a, a list of key bindings, uh, a lot of that stuff is crap on the Internet. And we all know it. All those tutorials are some of them are for vanilla Emacs, some of them are for Space Mac, some of them are for Doom Emacs. Some of them don't know what the hell they are. And it's just a mess. So finding help was a little bit hard as well. So at the end of the day, I just didn't enjoy my experience with Emacs. I spent a whole month with it. And even after a month, I still stumble over a lot of the key bindings. I, like, I know quite a few of them now. but And I, I think if I continued to use it, I would continue to get better and learn some more. And I'd eventually learn how to customize those key bindings to something that would be more to my liking. Because, I, you know, I've done that with them, but I didn't actually go through and do that with Emacs, and maybe I should have. 
but I, I just didn't enjoy it. Like the, the thing about Vim is every time I open up Vim and accomplish something that's cool, I feel a sense of, uh, I feel rewarded. Like when I learned how to use macros in Vim, I was really excited because that's like, it's a really cool functionality and it kind of makes you feel like, like, yeah, I'm a Vim Pro now. Like, I'm not a Vim Pro now, but, you know, it makes you feel like you're doing something really cool. In Emacs, it always felt like a task. Like, it, it felt like a chore to do pretty much anything that was outside of just standard text editing. And it does that well. It does text editing well because I was using, it was just Vim for me. I was just using Vim, basically. But I had to, but it added the extra step of going out of the terminal and into a GUI client. So, it, it, I just didn't enjoy it, right? That is, that's, I think that's the, the ultimate conclusion of this entire experience is that I didn't enjoy it. And if you've watched videos over the last couple of weeks, you'll notice that a lot of times I just said, screw it and opened up Vim. Like it, it Vim is such a, an ingrained part of my workflow of doing everything I do for the channel, even a lot of the writing that I now do for my main job is done inside of Vim and that's where I enjoy being. And I tried to transfer a lot of that stuff over to Emacs, but what I found was that not only did I not enjoy it, but the only times that I was truly successful in doing a lot of that stuff was when I forced myself to start Emacs. If I was already in the terminal, which is what you saw a lot in, in the videos that I did previously to this, where I was like, when I riced X Monad, most of the, everything that I did there in terms of editing stuff was already in, I was already in the terminal, so I just opened up Vim. The only times I was successful in actually forcing myself to use Emacs is when I started an Emacs with the intention of doing something. So you start up on that beginning screen and you go into Dear Ed and you find your file and then you edit it and stuff. And it's great and then you can go through and use something like vterm to navigate through your file structure and move things around and, and you can do all this stuff and the times that i was most successful in using emacs was when i forced myself to start there and like i said when i was already in the terminal i wasn't going i found it harder and harder to force myself to leave to go to Emacs when it was just way easier to type the letter V and hit enter or V and then the you know the file name and then enter you know it's just so much easier that way so the last thing to cover is what happens next now I did not spend as much time as I would have liked with org mode I think org mode is really cool and I think there's a ton of features and a ton of stuff there that I just didn't get a chance to play around with so there's a good chance that I will spend a little bit of time in the months ahead with org mode and I did not get a chance to try Org Roam at all. And I want to try that as well because it looks really, really neat. And I want, like I said, I want to spend some really good quality time with it. And I think that if I use Emacs in that way where it's just like an application for Org Mode, that might be an okay thing for me. If I end up deciding that I want to use Org Mode, I don't know whether or not I will. Uh, I really am entrenched with VimWiki, so... We'll see how that goes. But anyways, that's really what happens next. In terms of the rest of it, I'm just going to use Vim. I mean, Vim is just, it, it's my happy place. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. And I'm glad that I had the experience with Emacs that I have had in the last month. It's given me a lot more knowledge over why people like it. I think that there's a ton of stuff there that people can enjoy and that if you can tailor your workflow to what Emacs does, it could be really good for a lot of people that are into that way of working. But if you are a Vim guy, if you if, if you are dedicated to using Vim and you've gone through and spent these hours and hours, you know, maybe months and months learning all the Vim stuff, moving away from that after all that effort and going into something else which you have to put an equal number of amount of time in, I don't think it's worth it for most people. I just don't. I, if if you're in that situation, which is was I, it took me a long time to get to the point where I can say I can use Vim. Now, and there's still a ton of stuff. Like I watch some of these Vim guys, like uh, the the Primogen, who is that his name? He's like a he's like a Vim YouTuber, and he goes through and does this amazing stuff with Vim, right? And it, it's just like he's a god at Vim. I look at that like I want to be that guy when I grow up. I'm nowhere near that. Like, but 
compared to where I was, say, three years ago when I was like, how the hell do you quit them? Like, I don't know how to quit them. You know, <laughs> I was one of those guys. Like, that's where everybody starts at them. It's how do you get out of it? And but compared to that from where I'm now, I, I'm much more comfortable with them. And the thing about Emacs is that I think that I'd have to spend an equal amount of time in Emacs as I did in Vim, like years and years to get comfortable in it, tailor it to my particular workflow, and, and then maybe I'd be happy in it, right? That that could be possible, but I don't... The, the, the thing with Vim, and like I said before, earlier, is that even when I first started out in Vim, every time I learned something new, I had a very deep sense of accomplishment for, from learning that thing, and it was like, oh man, that's really cool. I never had that sense with, with Emacs. It just always felt like a chore to me. Maybe it's because I prefer things to do in the terminal. Maybe it's because uh, my beloved key chords failed me in this. Like, I love key chords, so you'd think that... I mean, Emacs is nothing but key chords. That's what it has, right? You'd think that I'd love this. You know, I'd love it because I love key chords, but it just seemed... Some of the key chords were like three long like it was really weird and i would everything just everything felt like a chore in max so like i said i it was a rambly video i probably could go on for another 20 minutes just some, with some some of my more uh weird experiences getting it you know trying to get it tailored to my work flow but i think i'll probably just go ahead and wrap it up here for, for now i'm done with Emacs. I'm going to spend, like I said, I'm going to spend some time with org mode, but I'm going to take a few weeks off and just kind of cuddle with my with my Vim install for a while. Uh, maybe add some key bindings or something because uh, I, 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 I miss Vim even though I've been using it for, you know, all along, right? Anyway, so that is it for this video. If you've tried Emacs or a flavor of Emacs and have had a good or bad experience, leave that in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. All that stuff. I really do appreciate everybody who has hit that red button. You can also follow me on Odyssey and Mastodon. Those links will be in the video description. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Patrick L. Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Evan Tool, Steve A. Sid A. Mitchell Art Center, Merrick Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, the BSDs Rock, and Peter A. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.